Hello everybody and welcome back to the backyard. It's felt like absolutely forever since I've said that. I mean, look at this place. So much has changed in just the span of like two months or something. I don't even know. Tonight I'm going after the Seder region with a few extra things added to my setup that should definitely give myself a better experience of photographing this unlike any other time I've done it before. Over the past three years I've done this. With summer almost in full swing, it's time to start gearing things up towards nebula season and the Milky Way season so we can see all those nice starry skies all over again. The future of my setup is here and I cannot wait to unload all the information for you guys in this video so you guys don't miss a thing with my setup and what new things I have planned for this summer and everything that I have planned for my setup too. So come along with me and my first summer astrophotography video as I photograph the Seda region from my backyard. Let's get into it. The Seder region is located in the constellation of, yeah, it's coming back and probably for the whole summer, so don't get mad for me for saying this, the constellation of Cygnus, the swan, the best constellation ever. I'm serious, this constellation is the GOAT, greatest of all time. It has everything in store for us and it is an astrophotographer's little treat. We see a lot of nebulae in this region of the sky and with this constellation and nebulae are basically collections of basically giant space dust. And luckily for us in the backyard, it's bright enough for us to take pictures of in pretty high resolution and good brightness and a lot of detail. Seder region is right in the middle of Cygnus located to that star called Seder that makes up part of the Cygnus constellation. If you have a wide angle lens, you could see pretty much everything in this field of view, but I have a telescope behind me, but things are just going to be just fine for this. Its formal name is IC1318, and I say formal because not a lot of people call it that. What's cooler? I see 1318 or the Seder region. I think Seder has a pretty cool name to it. Because it's so bright in the night sky, it's gonna be not much of a problem for me to get a lot of detail. And I'll also go into more details as to why it'll also be easier along with that. But let's talk about what's new on my setup because I'm sure you guys have been wondering and there's gonna be a couple of changes. So let's dive into it. Oh boy, have I missed this. The birds are chirping. There's a lot of leaves everywhere. There's nice sounds of lawn mowers and sprinklers. I am so excited to finally get things going and summer is finally here and I'm so excited. While winter is nice and all with all their fun targets that they have in the night sky, winter is kind of a sleeper month along with spring, which I was really surprised about this year. In the winter, the skies were completely clouded out. I mean, only for a couple nights where I was only able to get a couple targets this year, but besides that, we were pretty much clouded out. And while that's typical and I expect that, it does get me sad because I do miss out on some targets that I wanna shoot every single year that I just slack on. If you've watched my last video, you probably know where I've been and the things that I've been doing and what I have in store for this channel. So definitely make sure you check that video out right in the corner of the screen. But like I said, with spring, we normally do see a clearing in the skies, but this year we were clouded out, but in expense for that, we did get a total solar eclipse, which I was able to see. You guys should check that video out too. I hope everybody watched that video. But now that summer's here, skies are really clearing up. And now that gives us more time to photograph our favorite objects in the night sky. And one of mine is the Seder region. Well, I was about to say that we could sit down and talk about this, but no more chairs. And that's honestly a good thing for me. I know it kind of doesn't look that crazy, but there's a lot of things packed into this little guy. This is a mini PC. And a lot of people talk about mini PCs now, and a lot of people have it with their astrophotography setups. So why is it so monumental? What is the deal with all these mini PCs? Well, a lot of it comes down to convenience and organization. As you can see, now I have my cables all organized, courtesy of my dad, and I'm very happy to finally have a setup where I can just grab and go. Normally, I would have to grab out all the chairs and bins that if you saw in my older videos. When I took this setup to Cherry Springs, it was kind of disorganized. My cables were everywhere and things just didn't look nice. You could also get a lot of cable snags and things could go wrong too. But with a mini PC, everything's all connected. You could see that my computer now is on my setup, not somewhere else in the yard. And I have all of my cables connected here too. So convenience, check. Organization, check. I have all my cables wrapped here all together so they're not moving on my setup and that is crucial. I love that, it looks great. So now when I bring my setup up and down the stairs, I don't have to bring my cords separately. I could just take this thing up, bring it down over and over because there's no other way for me to do it because of those dumb stairs. So here it is, this little guy. And this little guy has 16 gigabytes of RAM. 
compared to my old computer that had four, that is four times as fast as my old computer. So things are going to be going a lot quicker, four times as quick. It also has a ton more storage with 512 gigabytes of storage. Compared to my old laptop that had 128, this is a huge upgrade. Also taking the size for this thing. This thing is really small and I have no hassle putting this on and off my telescope. One thing that I did do is installed some Velcro on my setup and onto this mini PC so that I could take this thing on and off without having to tie it or do anything of that crazy stuff because we don't need that. But this is a Melee mini PC. This is the Melee Quieter 3Q and it was about $200 on Amazon and I was blown away by that price with all the specs that it had. People have called it one of the best mini PCs for astrophotography and after using it a few times, I could really see where they come from. A really nice thing about this PC is that it's completely fanless. So that means there's gonna be no vibrations on my setup that could mess up my tracking accuracy when I'm tracking the stars along with my target all night. It also heats up and while that could be a bad thing, it's also a good thing. You see when we have the dew point and water vapor on the ground at night, sometimes that water can get onto our water wires and electronics if they're not heated. This thing gets heated overnight when it's running constantly a bunch of things. So that means that the water is going to stay off of this because there's heat. It has the same kind of function as a dew heater, but instead it's going to be a dew heater for my computer and it's gonna keep this thing nice and dry along with all of my cords and connections. So literally, what? there's no flaw with this thing. Everyone should get one. Now, I wasn't going to fully get this. This was kind of an impulse buy. There was some method to the madness though. The reason I got the mini PC was because of a huge mistake I made that cost me the life of the old computer. Even though I kind of missed that old computer, it was kind of slow, but let me tell you what happened. As I was saying, I have to take apart my setup with all the cords and the bins and the chairs and the laptop all at once when I'm trying to bring things back in. I'm bound to forget something and that is exactly what I did. Of course, I forgot the biggest and one of the most important things in my entire setup, which is the laptop. And just because of my luck, it rained about two hours later. So I'm sure you can connect the dots and figure out what happened. My laptop got fried. So yeah, RIP, you won't be seeing it again. I mean, it is still in my room, but I should probably throw it out. I need to stop crying about it. Now, I wanna be really honest with you. I probably would have gotten an ASI Air, but the problem with that is that basically it can only connect to main brand products. And I have a lot of different brands on my telescope setup, so it just doesn't work with mine. But it's completely fine because it still runs Windows and everything that I'm used to, like Nina, all that software, it's completely the same, so I have nothing to worry about. The cool thing about using a mini PC is that it's wireless. And even though there's a lot of cords going into the mini PC, it is still wireless. I can connect this mini PC to my phone and to my laptop, whatever I wanna use, and I can just control it from there. And it makes things a lot easier because I don't have to run in and out of the house. I could just sit there in the basement or wherever I am and just do things and just check on things without having to go back outside to make sure everything is fine. So nice, relaxed astrophotography and ease check mark guys it is just amazing just get one if you have a setup just get one please it's like a cult we have like a mini pc cult now in astrophotography i say this is the future of astrophotography sometimes because i feel like more and more people are converting to these and i could really see why with technology being as crazy as it is now cameras and everything astrophotography getting bigger and stronger now i could really see why people like the convenience of taking something in, leaving it out, and not having to hassle with all the old computer stuff that we don't have to worry about anymore. So yeah, let's dive a little bit more into Seder and then nighttime. The Seder region lies 1800 light years away from Earth. While those odds seem pretty far away, it's really not in terms of the grand scale of space. I'm gonna be using my same setup as normal because I have nothing else and I don't have a lot of money for anything else right now. Starting with the camera, I have my Player One Artemis C Pro, which is that dedicated astronomy camera. It's basically a camera that excels at taking pictures of space and it captures more red light in comparison to a regular standard camera. I need to emphasize the importance of red light because a lot of nebulae are red and with more red being able to go through this dedicated astronomy camera it makes things a lot easier when I stack all my pictures together to enhance the detail. I have my Optolong L Enhance in there too which is a light pollution filter to block out the moon and any other street lights and sky glow that might get in the way of my pictures at the end of the day. I have my SV Boney SV503 80 millimeter ED doublet refractor. Jeez, that is a lot of words. They need to slim it down a little bit. It's a telescope that has a focal length of 440 
48 millimeters, so things are gonna be nice and wide for this. I'm gonna be able to get a lot of space in one picture. I have my ZWO ASI 120 guide camera on there, along with my SV Boney 50 millimeter guide scope. And once those combine, I'm gonna be able to have nice tracking accuracy on the stars, so my long exposures stay nice and sharp without any star trails. Now that we got all that out of the way, let's get into nighttime and let's see what we're working with tonight under these skies. Hoping things are good. check is 2.32 in the morning and this is way past my bedtime but for astrophotographers it's a little bit different. We've been up and running on the Seder region for quite a while now but I didn't really come out to check on things until now right before I'm going to bed but things are going just as perfect as they should be and the mini PC is performing amazing. I literally have no complaints about this thing guys. The mini PC has done a great job doing everything that it's supposed to with no problems and it's just like how it operated with the old laptop too. So everything's the same. Summer is in full swing right now in the sky as I can see and a lot of famous objects like Cygnus, the Swan, Sagittarius, Scorpius, all of those wonderful constellations that fall right in the Milky Way core look absolutely amazing right now even in these really light fluted skies we do have a problem though the moon is starting to come up which you know it is what it is that's completely fine because we only have about an hour and a half left of light before we can finally end things for the night and go to the next imaging session maybe tomorrow or the next night that it's clear one thing i do want to do this summer is actually get out to some dark skies because milky way season is the optimal time to do it the reason for this is because during milky way season there are the most amount of stars in the sky and you could see the milky way pretty pronounced in darker skies. So seeing a lot of those stars in the sky makes you feel wonderful again and I cannot wait to finally experience that once again because at my house the only stars that I could see are the ones through my telescope mostly. We're doing five minute exposures just as usual from the backyard and with my filter things are looking great despite this moonlight so there's going to be a nice image at the end of this video. I think I'm going to spend a couple more nights shooting this target because I really think it's going to need it and with all this light pollution it will definitely need more exposure time but that's no problem because I do that most of the time for any of my projects anyway so we're going to be all fine with that. I guess now it's time for the image reveal guys and I hope you guys enjoyed this video on my new setup and what things are going to be looking like this summer. Make sure you guys check out that past video of mine to make sure you guys are up to tune with what's going to be happening on this channel and I'm stoked, guys. I'm stoked for what we can do. So, until next time, peace.